I've got some uh, burning editorial questions about some things you said. Because I, I, I think I told you in my initial letter that I bought um, uh, Second Sight immediately when it came out. I said, oh, my God, the editor of Harry Potter, this, this book will have everything I ever need to know. And it did, because it was a good purchase. Yeah. Um, so I've got some uh, questions about that. But it would be irresponsible of me not to at least mention the fact that you do have a book coming out here in the very near future. What can you tell us about a year of everyday wonders available December 8th? Yeah. Yes. A Year of Everyday Wonders. It's a picture book. Uh, it'll be my third picture book. Yes. <laughs> um, and, uh, uh, and, and, and what it does is it actually grew out of my own habit of noting the firsts as I go through a year. So like, um, so like on January 1st, I will say like, oh, this is the first morning of the new year. And then I will have a cup of coffee. I'll be like, this is my first cup of coffee of the new year. <laughs> and then later as things go along, you know, it's like... Um, my first panic attack of the new year. Oh, how exciting. <laughs> well, there's that. Or, or like, uh, you know, my first cold of the new year. But, or, <laughs> sure. or, or even better, like the first day I can sleep by, without a big heavy blanket on the bed. You know, the first day you go outside without wearing a jacket. Um, the first time you go to the beach, the first ice cream cone of the year, all those different things. And um, so I, I've always noted these habits, these little things, just like for fun in my own mind. And um, one day I sat down and I basically turned them into a book like that runs through the calendar year, starting in January and going through to the following December. And um, and it's all these little firsts. And um, and then there's also kind of a subtle uh, story built in there. Because when a, on the first day of the new year, the main character has a first fight with her brother, and then later there's a like thirty ninety eighth fight with your brother, and then later the two hundred twenty second fight with your brother, and um, but you also see them sort of reconcile in the course of the year, and um, it was really fun to write because uh, it, it's entirely written in firsts. There are there are no characters named. There is no narration. It's just these lists of firsts or lasts or thirds or whatever it might be. And um, and so in that way, it was really fun to leave space for an illustrator to come in and fill in all those details about like, who is the character and um, and what is the family like? And I mean, actually the, the text didn't even specify is the main character male or female or, bin or non-binary or whatever. Um, so uh, So the illustrator got to fill that in as well. You only knew that the main character had a brother basically. And, um, and there are, there are certain things set by the text that dictate a little bit, like, like the fact that there's a snowfall, um, indicates that probably they're living in the Northeast or, or, you know, the North of the country as opposed to the South. And it's very definitely the United States in various ways. I think there's fireworks at the 4th of July, but, um, but it's an, inter it's an interesting manuscript in both like the poeticism of it and kind of the negative space that left for the illustrator to fill in. And uh, it, it was bought by Emma Ledbetter at Abrams, who does lovely, lovely picture books. And I say that as one of her authors, obviously, but even so, she does great picture books. <laughs> I say that as an editor admirer as well. And, um, and uh, she hired uh, Chin Ling, who is a Canadian illustrator. And Chin was perfect because she is very character oriented and she captures like a lot of those little emotional moments and uh, gestures and things that really define who a personality is in illustration. And so she was a great person to kind of like fill in the missing spaces left by the text. And, um, and it, the book turned out really, really beautifully and I'm really pleased with it and proud of it. So what thank a you for having this uh, amount of trust that uh, you're not even picking a gender. You, you would do that. Uh, illustrator and i hope it comes out wonderful because my entire book kind of more or less rests on <laughs> you're doing a wonderful job is that because of over so many years and, and and previous picture books you've learned that you can trust an excellent illustrator or how how, how do i get to that state of sin like let me <laughs> trust the illustrator because i don't and i aspire to <laughs> um I mean, yeah, I, I have extreme privilege here in that, like, I have seen this, you know, I have made this process happen myself in that I'm an editor. So, so I, um, so I know the magic that can happen. I know the thing that can be done. And, um, and if you're working with a good editor whom you trust, 
Um, and, and I think at this stage, I think most editors are giving authors at least some input into their illustrator selection. They're saying like, you know, um, I, uh, I'm thinking about these three people. Who do you like? At least I almost always do that. And I think most editors do. Um, maybe I'm wrong. We do that at Lee and Lowe too. Um, then, then if you have a sense of what the illustrator is capable of, it's a lot more easy to relax and trust the things in that way. If, if you trust the, and, and I also got to look at the, uh, at the sketches at one point and I got, I got to give feedback on those. And that was useful too, because um, like at that point I went through and I sort of tweaked some of the phrases to try to work better with what Chin was doing. And actually when I submitted the manuscript, I made it very clear that I was open to tweaking things with however the illustrator might want to handle it. Um, and, and I think most of that comes from, again, like a sense of humility in knowing what I am capable of and what I am not capable of. <laughs> or, or, you know, like, uh, or, or, and, and recognizing what I can bring to a manuscript versus what an illustrator can bring to a manuscript. And illustrators, like it's their job to bring character and drama and all those sort of things through just the illustration. What I'm providing is the structure and, um, and ideally some, uh, some insight, you know, some, uh, what's the word I want? Some pithy little phrases <laughs> that, 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 that move the reader along. 